And Dr. Pachenik will be with us about 20 minutes into the next hour. I don't want to just spend all day on what he wanted to come on about, about the info war and the success of this show. Though it's important to admit that to show the weakness of the establishment media. It's not really our strength, it's their weakness. I want to pick his brain as a real expert on, on Islamic terror. He was involved in Camp David early on, the founding of Delta Force right through that. Then a bunch of big famous uh, hostage situations that he helped resolve when they had hundreds of hostages. He was also involved, according to London Telegraph and other major papers in the Italian government, with a whole bunch of other stuff uh, dealing with the communists and others, but he'll never speak to that really on air. Uh, his website, stevepachinik.com. But so much is happening right now, and this is a time in history clearly where the stars are aligning for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and so that's why I want to get his take on the general world. But, uh, Doctor, I'd like to just throw a question out, have you talk a couple minutes, move to the next question. There's so much to talk about. What would you like to start out with? I want to start with the fact that today is December 7th, when we uh, in the United States government performed the first stand down in 1941 on December 7th, and that was FDR and the attack on Pearl Harbor. From that day on, 60 years later, our government continued to do stand downs, false flags under Bush, Cheney, and we had 9 11, we had the attack in Iraq. That was a disaster. We went to three wars. Yeah, that was a disaster. We went into Yemen, Sudan, Somalia. Nowhere along the line did our generals or admirals stop any civilian president from saying this is a disaster. It's great that all the DIA operatives came out afterwards and said that this was a problem. But I have asked repeatedly our intelligence community to stand up and stop the president of the United States, be it Bush, Cheney, Clinton, or Obama. Obama has been a disaster from day one. His history has been nothing but a contrived absurdity about a CIA operative born of a CIA grandmother and mother and grandfather who had no background, no experience whatsoever, and was voted in without any vetting by the Secret Service the national security, or any organization in the United States. You and I could not have become president of the United States the way Obama did. And what did he do? He created a false flag and a stand-down issue with the uh, killing of Osama bin Laden, which never occurred since you correctly defined 14 years ago that Osama bin Laden was dead. So we had an Admiral McRaven, the SEAL team, which was just a, a shame. It's a, it's a disgrace in the United States that they stood up and said they killed Obama, Osama bin Laden, when in fact they had even been dead for 14 years. So we have a collusion among the president of the United States who's created false issues, in, not only in uh, Benghazi, not only in Osama bin Laden, but in Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook was par excellence, the, the description of a non-existent, killing of a so-called Asperger's individual who supposedly killed 22 kids and several adults with a lot of machinery and a lot of heavy equipment. It was nonsense. It never occurred. Sandy Hook was shut down as a school in 2008. Since that time, Obama has criminally, consistently developed stand down and false flags all over the United States. Well, let's shift gears then, uh, Dr. Pachenik. I want to expand on this. Looking at the big picture, as a guy that was at the highest levels of, of you know, major global I operations, think, yes. Uh, yes. specifically, what do you see happening with these jihad attacks happening all over well, Europe, now happening in the U.S., the media attempting to say it wasn't jihad attack, that blew up in their face. I mean, they are really making some idiot moves right now. What do you think is the larger situation behind this? The larger situation is that we are creating, we, the United States, along with NATO forces, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, we're creating strategic tension points all over the Middle East in order to create conflict so that we can control the situation. First, we create this organization and chaos, and then we come in to us presumably control the situation in the Middle East. This is completely created by our capability and our incapacity to control chaos. We've created the chaos through the CIA. We created the chaos through SOCOM and the military forces. 
We then went into ISIS. We created ISIS with the help of Turkey and Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Dubai. And then we wanted to use that as a counterforce to the Iranian recognition, to the Shiites, and use it as a counterforce to Bashar Assad. Bashar Assad would not comply, neither did Russia. So what's happening is we're getting into a confrontation created by Obama and his neocon advisors, who again will not stand down and are supporting Israel to create a position in the Middle East where Israel and the United States can still demand that they're a Muslim terrorist over the world. For the most part, I've got to be very frank. The Muslims are basically fighting the Muslims. It's not an issue that really concerns the Shiite Sunni States. civil war. Why are they allowing it's it to blow scene. back? Well, the blowback is simply because the San Bernardino issue, I'm still not sure where it stands in terms of a false flag. Number one, it's very rare to have a standing shooting operation in an in a uh, uh, office where you have basically disabled individuals. That and by the way, it is incredible. They were having a live shooting drill. They, this is ABC yeah. News. They were having a shooting drill now when this reportedly happened. Not only that, they've been having a shooting drill in a center of, of where disabled uh, veterans and others were living and having it on a monthly basis. So that really was, number one, an S-1 flag. Number two, you had a woman who supposedly was in Pakistan, went to Saudi Arabia, was less, less than 100 pounds, being able to uh, wear a vest, at the same time carry guns, and at the same time shoot and Twitter, absolutely impossible. And at the same time, we had a... So why would they uh, allow a jihad false flag? And, and, and to be clear... Because there's one issue that you have brought out repeatedly and correctly, and that was the Sandy Hook issue transposes everything we have here, and that is gun control for Obama. His last wish and dying wish may well be dying wish is that we have a gun control in the United States. That is not going to happen. And at the same time, he has really committed criminal acts against the United States with the help, once again, of our CIA, our intelligence community, and other elements of our government. Well, let me expand on that. And, and I, I've sent Joe Biggs to a bunch of these. He never thinks they're a false flag. He's a combat vet, smart guy. He says because of the drill at the same time. He says because of the tweeting while the killing's going on. He says because of the drill at the exact same time and other things. He, bare minimum, thinks that they had warned people locally they were ready, uh, not that they were involved, but that higher-ups opened the door to make sure it went ahead and happened. They gave them the passport. They gave them, they let her back in with a you know fake address and fake info. So bare minimum, they were being protected. So that is a stage one uh, you know, partial false flag, well, bare minimum. Uh, let but, me but explain something to you. We, have, we usually have a very effective FBI. Trust me, when they're able to hand me subpoenas because I go on your show, or I've committed acts uh, for our country 35 years ago, and then they apologize, saying that we're, we're, we're spending hundreds of thousands to give you a subpoena, even though it's not appropriate. They're, a, they're very capable of monitoring what's going on and stopping anyone from coming in. Now, it's important to understand... Well, let's stop that right that there. Woman, I didn't know you got subpoenaed. Hold on, Steve. Visa. Hold on, Steve. Steve Pachanik's our guest. Yeah. You got subpoenaed by the FBI about coming on my show? Well, yeah, basically because I had uh, talked about, I, I, and I brought up in the, in, the, in the books, the issue of uh, the Red Brigade and what happened in Italy, although I never went into detail. So I got subpoenaed by the Miami-Dade prosecutor, and basically they brought in a Italian uh, prosecutor who had spoken. Oh, no well, that's English. right. I saw that a while Wait. back. Uh, and, and, that's and correct, but that's not the issue. The issue is we have a dysfunctional government. That's well, that was collusion. a good piece of work you did with the Red Brigade. you got to be really proud of that one. Well, I'm not <laughs> proud of anything right now. I'm more proud of you and what's happening to the United States because gloating about the past is not really the issue at hand. What's the issue at hand is you brought on Trump, you're speaking the truth, and now through your vehicle we can say this president is committing crimes against the United States. As Obama, as Cheney had committed crimes, and Bush, and there is no accountability the FBI has Well, let's go back, and then I'll give you the floor. I want to go back to the FBI, because that's interesting. Uh, so specifically, did they apologize to you for investigating you, for doing no, stuff for the CIA and the State apologize. Department? 
No, what they basically do is say, we're following orders. It was like the German uh, Nazi era. I mean, what you have now is really everybody doing their duty without really thinking twice about what they had to do. I had to spend $20,000 in cash to a crooked lawyer who never even showed up at times to my hearing. And basically, uh, my wife, who was, based, was born in an American family and that came in 1628, was so furious. She started to yell at the uh, prosecutor and say, how dare you bring in an American military officer who was a deputy assistant secretary to uh, answer questions to this incompetent Italian fool. But that's not the issue. The issue at hand is we have the continuation of corruption and, and, and crime. And this is where America has to say it's enough. We don't have a year left for Obama to finish out. Obama will create more false flags. He's not in charge. The CIA, probably with Brennan and with the DNI and with a whole bunch of others who are involved that you've never heard of, SOCOM, or the, the fact that we've uh, used mercenary soldiers and we've used special forces and we've taken off the airplanes to go in there as non-combatants, basically, and fighting in the rules of engagement that we're not used to. What's happening is we're creating a fear dynamic, which is blown up by the uh, Republicans, and at the same time, Hillary is totally not qualified to answer it. The only thing that can happen is we need an immediate change of government with somebody like Trump who can begin to assess what's going on and perhaps... Is well, let's go back then, Dr. Pachinik. Let's go back because you were excited about the Trump thing and saw it as a yeah. key sea change point. Uh, so, so let's break down why you think that interview was so important. Well, the, the reason that interview is important is for 14 years you have been carrying the water in an amazing way to disseminate the truth as we truthers and others who understood what was happening in the government were trying to get out in terms of an outlet. You were the only one on the radio and TV, quite frankly, who said, you know what, Dr. Pachenik, I don't know you, but I suspect that you're correct when I said 14 years ago that whoever is going to be president of the United States, and I didn't know who would be president, nor did anybody, would basically declare that he was going to be victorious by having killed Osama bin Laden. And of course, the idiot Obama and McRaven and the rest of the SEAL team and the rest of the intelligence community fell for that PSYOPs trap. And, and let's go I further. Them. A year after you were on and then three years after you were on 14 years ago, the Secretary of State Marilyn Albright came out and said exactly what you said. He's dead. They're going to roll him out. And then even Walter Cronkite said he talked to high-level folks that said that was true. So we know okay. this is going on. But, but for now, me, it signifies... Let, let me get to the point to the American public. You are important because basically you have been the game changer in the entire business of the media. Now, I've known the media very well from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and all of them, Roger Ailes. Basically, their job is to get ratings and to get money for whatever content they produce. Your job, which I really didn't know from the beginning, was to assess the facts that were out there, and thanks to your own intuitive knowledge and sense of righteousness, you went on to say, okay, let me hear what the alternatives are. And you continued with it. And in that sense, to me, you represented the American public, the public I knew, the people who worked hard, the people who had to earn a living, the people who went to jobs on a daily basis, not the politicians like Hillary or Obama or Bush who were entitled little brats who never spent a day in work, who never went and served the military, who never had to pay a mortgage, who never had to pay anything else other than the money that they accrued from book sales and self-aggrandizement. Those days are over, and what happened is you allowed a Trump to come in, thanks to Mr. Roger Stone, whom I've known about since the Reagan administration. And he was brilliant enough to say, you know what, we're going to legitimize the people who've been out there called the truthers and the wackos, the 20 million of us, who basically are saying, Bush... Cheney, Obama, you're wrong. Not only are you wrong, you're criminal. Well, to you show your inside baseball, I didn't know you knew Stone. I knew of Stone. I didn't know how much uh, high-level stuff he was involved in. I mean, elections in the third world, folks, put two plus two together. Uh, but uh, he's really a really great guy. I'm trying to get him back into town next week. Uh, and the, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff I learned, Trump knows a lot more, obviously, than, he, than the public knows. 
And Stone was basically talking about how many really good people in the government are basically saying what you're saying, that, that, that none of them were ever...